In today's video, we're going to be solving 30 post ME biology questions. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please, I want you to hit the, subs the subscribe button. Please support this channel by subscribing and sharing our videos with your friends. And don't forget to give this video a like. Please, uh, if you have not joined the Telegram group, I have the link in the description below. I want you to um, join the Telegram so that you can have access to soft copy of post ME past questions. You know, time flies like, like hey, the, the, there's no time. You just have to be very fast now with your preparation. Time does not wait for any man. All right, so we are going to be solving 30 post ME question on biology today. So question number one says that gills are used in respiration by all of the following aquatic animal except what? So when you look at the um, questions, you will see that option A is going to be the correct answers. Gills are specialized organs for gas exchange in aquatic animals. But when you see clams, clams are bivalve uh, mollusks that do not have gills. Instead, they use a different mechanism for respiration, involving the exchange of gases through the amount of um, cavity. So option A is the correct answer. Question number two says that air that moves out during respiration has what compared to air breathed in. Now you will see that option B is going to be the correct answer for that. Air that moves out during um, respiration has a, uh, is warm and has, and has lost its uh, moisture compared to the air that is uh, breathing. Now look at option um, number, number three says that as exhalation occurs in a human, all of the following occur except what? Now when you read through the options, you will see that option C will be the correct answers. That's uh, the diaphragm moves by relaxation of its muscle. That is not, um, that's not going to be true. So um, the diaphragm moves by relaxation of its muscle. So that's not the correct answer. Basically, during exhalation, the diaphragm relaxes and uh, moves upward, which decreases the uh, volume of the thoracic um, cavity. So causing air to be expelled from the um, lungs. Question number four says that which of the um, one of the following adaptive features of toad is not needed for aquatic life? A streamlined body, B counter shading, C position of eyes and nose tree, uh, D uh, process of lung. So the correct answer is option option B. Question number five says that the respiratory system consists of the following parts. So which one is the correct answer? Can you just pause the video and pick a correct answer? Okay, so when you look at option B, you will see that option B is going to be um, the correct answer for that. Now, number six says that neurons that carry impulses away from the nervous system are called what? The correct answer is the everent, um, everent nerves. That's going to be the correct answer. Please make sure you uh, put all these things um, to mind. Question number seven says that when you look at an intact human brain, what you see the most is a large, highly covalented outer surface. This is the world. Now you see that the, the, the largest part of the human brain is the cerebral cortex. And that is, you know, is divided into four. You know, we, is, is the largest. You know, you have the parietal lobe. You have the frontal lobe. You have the temporal lobe and you have the occipital lobe, okay? You see that the frontal lobe, you know, which is, you know, towards the highs, you know, is responsible for reasoning, for planning, for emotions and problem solving. And when you talk about the, you know, 
parental lobe, you know, it possesses the sensory information such as touch, you know, and so on and so forth. Now, so the, the cerebral cortex is the largest part of the human brain. Okay, so when you're talking about the medulla oblongata, you know, it regulates the autonomic functions such as breathing, such as the heart rate and the blood pressure. Okay, but when you're talking about the cerebellum, the cerebellum, you know, that's what is responsible for um, involuntary acts. I mean, some voluntary actions such as movement, you know, coordination. Um, that is the function of the cerebellum. It coordinates voluntary movement, balances, and posture. You know, so if the cerebellum of someone is damaged, as when it's another person, will not be able to work. So now the cere um the cerebral context. So is what is responsible for for reasoning for different um reflex actions for cardiovascular. So I mean, that's just for several involuntary actions. That's the uh, I mean, sorry, the, cere the, the cerebrum is basically, you know, for reasoning, for planning, for emotions, controls, involuntary actions, and for pains. But majorly, the medulla of Blaganta, uh, Blaganta is, it regulates many involuntary actions. But you're talking about the cerebral context, you know, that's what is responsible for reasoning, and that's the largest part of the brain. Medulla of Blaganta is for, you know, involuntary actions, such as breathing, the heartbeat, the blood pressure, and so on and so forth. So the cerebellum, you know, is for to coordinate voluntary actions and movements. So the, for our, our question, option A is the correct answer. Question number eight says that a nerve impulse. Question number eight says that a nerve impulse is received first by what part of the neuron? So, what's the answer for that? Can you just uh, pause the video and tell me the answer? Okay, so option C is going to be the correct answer. So the dendrites are the primary site for receiving signals from other neurons. Question number nine says the microbe used in fermentation of alcohol is what? I think um, that is very, very common. That is very common. The answer is yeast. Question number 10 says that if an organism obtains its means of uh, obtains its food by means of historia. I mean, ostoria. The plural for ostoria is ostorion. Okay, so, and that you would know immediately that the correct answer is para parasitic um, organisms. So, you know, what are examples of um, parasitic plants? You know, we have all these parasitic plants, they are attached to, to, um, they are attached to trees and they derive their food from their host by the use of historia. So the most common two examples, you know, you know, you have many examples of um, uh, of parasitic plants, but the most example that you should always remember is the doda plant. Doda plants. Sorry. The Dora plants and Mistito. So Mistito, these are the most common examples of parasitic plants. So they obtain their food from their host through um through historias, through historia. So other examples of parasitic plants, you can have the broom rape. We also have um, striga. So striga is also um, another um, plastic plant. You can also have raphosea. Raphosea too is also an, another example of um, plastic plant. But the most common um, examples of plastic plants, which is very common in exams like this, is you can be asked that other plant or mistito obtain its food from its old plant by the use of what? So by the use of Osteria. All right. Question number 11 says that the mode of nutrition 
I mean, which di digestion is extracellular is what that is talking about saprophytic nutrition, and that is carried out by um, fungi and also by fungi mushroom. That's most um, um, most common uh, parts, a common example of fungi that obtain its foods by saprophytism. Okay, so question number 12. If a ring of bark and phloem is removed from a stem, the plant dies immediately. So, okay, so what is going to be the correct answer? You know the, the work of phloem. Phloem is what, you know, um, carry the prepared food. The kitchen of the plant is the plant, I mean, is the leaves, right? So once the food is prepared in the leaf, it is transported to all other parts of the body through the phloem. So if the bark and the phloem is removed, what do you think is going to happen? I believe that um, it's going to disrupt the flow of, of nutrients and water, and eventually it will lead to the death of the plant because food is not circulating, all right? So option uh, B is going to be the correct answer. Question number 13 says that, which of the following is formed immediately Which of the following is formed immediately after the first product of photosynthesis? Lipid, starch, oxygen, and sugar. You know, um, during photosynthesis, which occur uh, on the, at the leaf, right? The oxygen enters the 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 plant the, the plant through um through stomata, so and then then water brought up by the um xylem, you know, combines together. To form, um, to form glucose on the leaves, right? So, once the glucose is formed in the leaves, it will be transported throughout the parts of the body um, by the phloem. Okay, so it means that the correct answer for question number thirteen is um, sugar. So, which is glucose, right? So, you can balance the equation. You have 6 here. You put 6 here. So, here, I'm sorry, this is 12. So, here we have 6. All right. So, okay. So, question number 13. So, option D is the correct answer for that. Yeah, sorry. Um, here you know I go to have oxygen, so that's how oxygen is produced during photosynthesis. Question number fourteen says that nitrogen-fixing microorganisms in leguminous plants lives symbiotically in the where in the um root nodules. This is a very important um question. You know that is symbiotic um relationship. Question number 15 says that intervenous chlorolysis is normally associated with the deficiency of what? Now, when talking about the intervenous chlorolysis or yellow between the veins of leaf, it is a common symptom of magnesium deficiency in plants. So the correct answer for that is going to be option A. Carnivorous plants are usually found in areas uh, which are what? Deficient, deficient in nitrate, which are deficient in oxygen. So, of course, you see that uh, the carnivorous plants, what are examples of um, carnivorous plants? Can you give me an example before I talked about that? You know, you have examples like pitcher plants and um, sundew, right? Sundew, um, sundew. You also have um, pitcher plants. So those are carnivorous plants. They eat insects and they grow in places that is deficient of nitrate. All right? So that's option A. This, they use these plants, I mean, these insects, 
as supplements for nitrate, for nitrogen. You know that nitrogen is taken um, by the plant in form of nitrate, okay? So that's why option A is going to be the correct answer. Yeah, sorry, this pH should not be written like this. pH should be small letter P, capital letter H. So places with low pH. So yeah, option A is going to be the correct answer. Can you give me other examples of uh, carnivorous plants, aside from sundew and pitcher plants? Okay, give that to the comment section below. All right, so we have uh, uh, bladder wort. We have a uh, butter worth. Okay, can you give another one aside these four options? Then I'll be there to um, reply your comments. Question number 17 says that the um, nitrifying bacteria nitrosoma uh, somonas convert ammonia to um, what? So nitrosomonas will convert ammonia to what? A, nitrate, B, nitric acid, C, nitrite, D, nitrous oxide. That's going to be option C to nitrite. So nitrosomonas will con convert ammonia to nitrite, and nitrobacter will convert nitrite to nitrate. So nitrosomonas, nitrobacter. So that is nitrosomonas from ammonia to nitrite. Nitrobacter from nitrite to nitrate. Question number 18 says that trace elements are required by plants mainly for the A formation of pigment and enzymes. B, production of energy and UMO. C, manufacture of um, carbohydrate. D, manufacture of um, nit of a protein. Yeah, one thing you have to know is that trace elements, also known as micronutrients, micronutrients, so these micronutrients, you know, are essential for various physiological processes in, in the plant. So including the formation of pigments and enzymes. So that's going to be, that's option A will be the correct answer. The element essential for the coagulation of blood is A, potassium, B, um, calcium, C, phosphorus, D, ion, um, C, phosphorus, D, ion. So what is going to be the correct answer? So the correct answer to that is option option B. You know that calcium is the mineral element which is essential for the clothing of blood. And it is stimulated by the release of what we call the thromboplastin from the uh, blood platelets. And it is the cofactor of the vitamin K which helps in the activation of blood coagulation factor and the coagulation of the blood. That's the clothing of the blood, all right? So the vitamin K is very important for the clothing of blood. So before I move on, I would like to, you know, remind you of the love of God. That for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I want to say God gave his only begotten son. We don't mean that God has a wife, but we are saying that, you know, Jesus Christ is the Son of God because his birth was not by the activity of Joseph. It was by the power of the Almighty God. It was not from sexual, you know, sexual activities between a man and a woman. For, for instance, you were born by the sexual activity by two, um, you and I were born by the, you know, activities between our parents. But that was not, that was not really the case of Jesus. 
His birth was by the power of the Holy Ghost. When you read the Bible, you are going to see, he said that the glory of the Almighty shall overshadow you. That was talking to his mother Mary. When the glory of God overshadowed Mary, the power of God came on him, on her rather, the power of God came on her, and that was how she became pregnant. It was by miracle, by the power of God. That's why Jesus Christ is called the Son of God. And so this Jesus Christ died for the sin of the world because it was prophesied. It was prophesied hundreds of years before he came to fulfill all this prophecy. In fact, everything that he said on the cross were, prophes were prophesied. In fact, he, he, on the day of his crucifixion, it has been written that his garment was going to be, you know, they were going to cast lot on his garment because his garment was a special one when it was on the earth. They, they could not throw the garment away. They had to cast lots. The soldiers, they casted lots. They cast lots on the, on the clothes of Jesus. So everything that, that happened to him on the day of crucifixion, his life journey was prophetic. And every of the prophecy was fulfilled. And there's a prophecy that is coming back to take everyone that believes in him. What are you doing? What are you waiting for? It is time for you to give your life to Jesus. Jesus Christ is God, is almighty. He has been from ages. He told the children of Israel, he said, before Abraham was, I am. He's the I am that I am. Give your life to Jesus. He will take care of you. Why don't you just pray, Lord Jesus, today? I believe you. You died on the cross for, died on the cross for me. You shed your blood. Because without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. I believe today. Because whosoever will just believe this, whosoever will believe, shall not perish, shall not go to the lake of fire. But we have everlasting life. I want to have everlasting life. I pray that God will answer your prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for this person that has had this message. I pray that you save his soul. I pray that you touch him or her. I pray that you save him from sin. I pray that you write his name in the book of life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' name of prayed. Amen. God bless you. Now we go on to question about 20. Question about 20 says that the companion cells are part of the dash. Now, when you talk about the companion cells, they are specialized parenchyma um, cells found in the phloem of plants. And they, um, they are involved in the loading and unloading um, sugars into the um, sieve tube. So that's the, you know, they are involved in the loading and the unloading of sugar in the sieve um, tube. So they are part of phloem. Question number 21 says that in millions test, when the reagent is added to a protein food item, a white precipitate is produced, uh, which forms A, blue on eating, B, B, yellow on eating, C. So what's going to be the correct answer? Can you pause it and just give your own answer? Okay, so, all right. Now, the correct answer is going to form red on eating. That's the million test for protein. Question about 22 says that the mode of nutrition in Nitrobacter, Ascaris, and Homo sapiens are respectively are what? Now, when you're talking about the um, Nitrobacter, you know, a bacteria, so you know that it's going to be chemosynthesis. Ascaris, you know, that's warm, you know, it is parasitic. And Homo sapiens, sorry about this, this is Homo sapiens that is human being and so the form of um uh, nutrition in a human being is um holozoic human being will swallow uh food whole and digest it within all right so that's intracellular digestion okay so what's the correct answer for that that should be option option b
Yellowing of leaves is a symptom associated with deficiency of what? Iron, calcium, and yeah. Can you look into the option and select your answer? So when you look through very well, you see that um, option B is going to be the correct answer. Nitrogen, sulfur, and um, So that's the option D, magnesium, nitrogen, and iron. Question number 24 says that complete breakdown, a complete oxidative breakdown of glucose will result in what? Now, that results in um, 36 um, AP, ATP molecules. Question number 25 says that the breakdown of protein into ammonia is known as as what Nutri uh, nutrific uh, nutrification putrefaction uh, ammonification um decay so can you pause the video and select your answer okay so we see that option c is the correct answer that is very simple question number 26 says that root a are developed from the dash Epidemics of the roots. So, what is going to be the correct answer? Can you pause the answer and give your answer? Because this question is a very common question in biology and it's something you should not despise. I think option A is going to be the correct answer. Of course, you can remember that the most important use of the root A is, is it absorbs um, water and nutrients from the soil because uh, by the process called osmosis. So, yeah. Question number 27 says that, which of the following gives the color seen in fruits, flowers to them? A, plastids, B, leucoplast, C, chloroplast, D, um, um, Chromoplast. All right, can you just um, pause the video and guess your answer? Okay, so we see that option D is going to be the correct answer. Chromoplasts are responsible for giving color to fruits and flowers. They are specialized uh, plastids that contain uh, various pigments, such as the carotenoids, you know, and the santophyll, which impart yellow, um, orange red colors to the uh, plant tissues. So that's the chromoplast. Now let's look at the question number 28. It says that during the light dependent reaction, A, glucose is formed, B, um, CO2 is fixed, C, the NADPH and the ATP are synthesized using the electron released from water, C, water is split and the electrons produced are used for glucose um, synthesis. Option C is going to be the correct answer. In the light-dependent reaction of photosynthesis, water is split. Of course, you know that. I'm releasing electrons. These electrons are used in the synthesis of Na, um, the NADPH, and the ATP, which are energy carriers used in um, carbon cycle to produce uh, um, glucose. So option C is going to be the correct answer. Eutrophication refers to the growth of A, bacteria, B, fungi, C, uh, protophytes, D, algae. Now, this question is very common in, I think I've seen this question in OEP, which tell me for more than, um, more than two times, but I think I copied it particularly from uh, one other university, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I think I, think I copied it from another university, but I've seen it from um, OAU. As, so UNN, you know, Unical, and some other universities. So you can meet all these questions. I got them from um, past questions, post in past questions. Question number 30 says that all the following statements are consistent with the concept of um, trophic structure, except A, at every feeding stage, some energy is wasted from the chain. That's correct. B, the nearer the organism to the beginning of a food chain, the greater the availability of the energy that is 
correct. The first trophic level is occupied by the autotrophs, that is very correct. The, there are few numbers of organisms at the start of the fusion, that is incorrect. Yeah, I believe you have gained a lot in this uh, video. Share with your friends, share with your pocket mate, with all or with your sleepers mate, um, with your wristwatch uh, mate, with all your mateable mates. Thank you very much. God bless you. Subscribe if you have not subscribed. Do have a good day.